Okay, I'll admit it. There's two, let me see, three major things I want to clarify about my original statement as it relates to the Amber Geiger case and the verdict, the sentencing, and the jury selection. In my original video, if you haven't seen it, it's going to be linked right up here. My original video, maybe on this side, in my original video, <laughs> I spoke about three things that bothered me and three things that drew my attention that I thought was suspicious, right? Normally, I go with the justice system and I say, look, the justice system normally works itself out. 90% of the time, they're going to be right. They're going to be accurate. And it's going to work out no matter what people say. Racism within the justice system is very hard to see through on every level, in every courtroom, in every jurisdiction. It's almost impossible. But this time, I felt like something was a little fishy. But now after watching and listening to the jurors, understanding state law a little bit better and understanding the court process in the state of Texas, I have to clarify these three things. First and foremost, I was a little suspicious about the jury selection given the fact that the demographic didn't match the jurors. It doesn't always match the jurors, but I thought it was suspicious because in this instance, a black man was murdered or killed and they determined it was murdered by a white police officer. Presumably she was off duty, but still she's considered a police officer. And then you stack the jury with four black and I mean, six black and four Hispanic and two whites. Like that seems like a recipe for maybe an inconsistent outcome, given the fact that historically black folks and, his, and Hispanic folks have had issues with police injustice, at least perceivably police injustice in their, in their case. And some of them are real police injustices. Not saying that white people don't have injustice, but I'm saying historically black folks and Hispanic folks tend to feel that they're being um, targeted more often than anybody else. And then there were eight women and four men. So that in of itself, I thought that the women would sympathize with a mother who lost her son and that would be sort of prejudice. Come to find out, given the statements that was made, it seems that they were very fair and impartial. Let's go to the next point and then I'll finish it off strong. The second point was that I was confused. Why did they charge her with manslaughter? And why did they charge her with second degree murder instead of manslaughter? Everybody in the country, most of the people in the description section, I mean, the comment section were saying, why not manslaughter? Why not manslaughter? Apparently they were able to determine that when she got into the house, she made the statement out of her own mouth that she was going to kill the intruder. Her mission, when the intruder came at her, she felt like she was her life was in danger. She made it out to kill him. In the Texas state law, if there is a level of intent to kill somebody, not negligence, not that my gun accidentally went off or I, 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 I panicked, was that I intended to kill that person, that is considered to be murder. They, I believe, now they accurately charged her with murder and then when the sentencing came out i thought she should have got 15 years but i also thought that the judge were responsible for the sentencing which most of y'all probably still do that's not the case in the state of texas the jurors are responsible for deliberating the sentencing and in this case the jurors who were majority women and majority uh, uh minority decided that 99 years, which is the maximum, and 28 years, which is what the prosecution uh, um, laid out for them as a recommendation, they felt like that that was too much. That was too long. She didn't deserve that much time. The jurors said that, not the judge, who people want to criticize for going down and hugging her. Mind you, she went and hugged both families. Also, she gave the girl the Bible. The girl asked for the hug. The judge didn't have no intentions on hugging her. She asked for the hug and begrudgingly, the judge actually hugged her back. Now, I'm pretty sure she regretted because of the optics, but there's nothing wrong in my opinion of that judge hugging her after the case is over. But anyway, the jurors gave her 10 years. Some of them came out and said because of Botham's personality, because of what he represented, they believe he would have been more forgiving and more lenient. His brother came out and forgave her and gave her a hug in the middle of the courtroom. The jurors, in my opinion, they gave a, a relatively reasonable synopsis about her life and what she can do after the fact. And they took into consideration that this is not her just going to jail and going back to her regular life. She will never be a police officer again. She appeared to have been distraught and showed remorse and that she got to do at least a decade. Now, you know, she's not gonna do the full decade. Now that she cut up in prison, she'll do the full decade. But that's being sentenced to a decade is not a, a small feat, right? 
So those are the things that I wish that I would have learned a little earlier before I made the prediction. I will say that I didn't unequivocally state that. I said that it gave me pause and I it was suspicious, but I, I wanted to make this video to clarify so you guys see what my perspective is and for you guys to learn some things you probably didn't know initially. Let me know what you think in the comment sections. Make sure you go into the Officer Tatum store, get your cool merch. Y'all know what it is. Like and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell so you get notifications. Bookmark the page because y'all know what it is when it comes to you know what. I'll see y'all in the next video, man. I love y'all. I'm out. Peace.